Hey you guys, this is Certified Touch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is my Look and Learn Front of Class. Here we go. Before we start, I'm gonna try to introduce myself and tell me like how long I've been doing hair. Y'all know I go by name Certified Touch, but my real name is Teresa. I've been doing hair for a pretty long time now. First, I was an assistant, and then, you know, I got tired of being an assistant. I want to do my own thing, and I started braiding. I started off braiding hair. I started off doing like twists, for the justice braids inside my room, and then. I was getting tired of it, so I just started doing like quick weave and sewing and stuff. Then I started working in somebody's shop. Then I got my own shop. And I'm right here right now teaching y'all how to do a front tool. Hello, I'm Jamie. Um, I go by Shadow Hair Life. I've been doing hair for about like two years, three years now for like actual clients, but I've been interested in helping others do hair and being assistant since like 2015. My name is Christina. I go by Slay by Chris. I've been doing hair for four years and I'm from Miami, but I live in Savannah, Georgia. My name is Kathy, like coffee, but Kathy. Um, I go by Mrs. Cash. Um, I've been doing hair forever. That's all I ever did. I've worked in a shoe store, but I never did anything else but hair since I was young. Um, I started off as a braider and as an assistant. Um, but yeah, I live in Savannah, Georgia as well. Um, my um, hair pitch is Save Our Kids, and I've been doing hair for four years. I started from my room with my friend's hair, and now I do hair on the back of my chair. My name is Isha, and I've been doing hair for like 10 years. I started in high school, I started off doing flats, and then I got more into quick weave and curls. Good morning, my name is Esther. I go by Heavenly Hands on Instagram. Um, I've been braided since second grade for a very, very long time. And I transitioned to like extensions, like probably after high school. And I've been in somebody braiding assistant for maybe about eight months. And then I just branched out, did my own thing. And so I've been full time for three years now. And I'm in a suite, so I like it. Hello, my name is Bianca. And I've been doing braids since I was 14. And I just started doing like sewing and stuff like last year. Hi everyone, my name is Angelica. I started, let me see, throughout high school, I was back and forth doing hair. I finished hair school this year, last year, February. And I started doing little kids here. I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and I jumped in the quick weaves and that's my passion. <laughs> Okay, first I'm gonna start braiding, okay? So y'all can watch me and we're gonna talk. And you know what's so crazy about it? Like I never had a job. Like I used to apply for jobs and I'll dress up. Like I had an interview at um Kmart. I dressed up and all like I went to go buy some new flats and I went to Kmart. They was like I was like, um, hi my name's Teresa, I'm here for an interview. They was like, What interview? We're not doing an interview today. Yeah, and I caught a buzz to go, um, so I didn't get the job. So I just know, like, hair was just for me, because I've been doing hair for a very long time. And I told my mom, like, you know, things was not always good for us, and I always told her, like, trust me, when I'm going to do hair, and you will never have to worry about nothing. Like, right now, my mom, like, she's 45, she don't have a job. I take care of her business, she watch my kids. Yeah. Tell you whatever you want to do, just go for it and just stay focused. And all you gotta do is just be consistent with doing hair. Like I'm very consistent. Like I just had a baby and y'all see I'm back. Cause I just can't stay home. Like I just really love doing hair. Like it keeps my mind like I don't know. It just feel like a drug to me. I just be hot off of it. 
Did you take classes or you just like? Yes, I took it? classes. I took classes. Um, I took a class with Eric and Tate. Mm -hmm. It don't like it don't matter like how much you know. You feel like your work is perfect. You still have to take a class. You could never stop learning. Like after like, I think I'm gonna take another class with Eric and Tate, but it's gonna be like a one-on-one -on -one class because there's a lot of stuff that I really wanna know, like about friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I still have my flaws. I'm not perfect. Sometimes I'll be looking at my work and I'll be like, oh, I don't too much like it. Listen, I you just, nice. like, just got to stay mean, humble. Because, like, the old me, like, when I used to be, like, in high school, I was a hothead. I'd be quick to tell you, like, pull up, let's fight. But now, like, I just humble myself and I just keep it so professional. It don't matter how much they'll curse me out. Like, yeah. I had a client that sat in my chair and talked about me, and I seen it, and I just told her, you know, I unbraided her hair, and I was like, I'm not going to do your hair. And then she was like, why? I said, I see what you text about me, like, I see what you text your friend. And she was like, oh, then why are you not doing it? I said, I seen your text. And then she started cursing me out. She was like, I was pregnant. This and, oh. and I kept it professional. I just oh, sat I think in it. I was there that day. You were doing my hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was cursing me out. Is she but these people, her birthday or something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was there. Y'all gotta stay humble. <laughs> like, they be trying to get you out of character. Sometimes you do the touch up on the frontal. On the frontal? Yeah. Okay, let me tell you. Some of my clients, they don't be wanting to take the hair out. <laughs> okay? So, I just recently fixed my website where I'm telling people, like, your hair have to be like two weeks old in order for me to do a touch up because they saw me be hanging out, the braids just be everywhere and they come for a touch up and I'll be like, mm -hmm. And like when you do a touch up, when I do a touch up, I remove the whole front. I clean it and apply it right back. Okay, but that's like a whole yeah. install, so yeah. That's and I use great. like, don't use alcohol because what I realized with alcohol, mm -hmm. it really rips out people's hair. Why are you wiping the um, person like the front of the hair? you'll see the they real hair like ripping off. Yeah. That happened to one of my clients. Like she was using alcohol and it just ripped out her edges. That's why you have to use C twenty two. This is C twenty two. That's the proper way to use that. What you do is you spray it and then like you rub it and then it slowly like slides up. Like this really works. And like frontals are very high maintenance. Like don't feel like you you did something wrong if a client texts you and says, oh, it's been a week and my front will lift up. It's very high maintenance. Like, if you have oily skin, if you sweat a lot, if you're working out, front is not for you. Just get a closure. The question is, is there a, a way to work around a bad frontal? No. <laughs> this, oh my God, I couldn't <laughs> wait to start this class and tell y'all about this. It don't matter how good you are, like, I see a couple of hairstylists saying that, oh, um, if you're good at what you do, you can work with any front of you. That is not true, okay? That is not true. And y'all could, I'm about to give y'all some notes so y'all can write it in y'all notes on y'all phone. Um, it's not true. Once you have a bad front, you cannot work with it. For example, like, if I have, okay, I have a dark front, right? And I go use it on the night she's recording. I go use it on her. It's going to look like black tape in front of her hair because she's red skin. That's why y'all always tell y'all red skin girls or y'all white, like, you know, mm -hmm. tell them to bring transparent lace. Transparent lace is when this lace part is completely white. This is an HD lace. I was just going to ask you about that. This is an HD lace. Y'all can't even see the lace, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, when, like, when my clients bring good frontals, I'd be so excited when they bring bad frontals. Like, it's like little girls would bring bad frontals, and I try my best to, like, work over it. And for dark-skinned girls, a transparent lace is not a good lace for them. It don't matter what foundation you use, the makeup will still look too light. Even if the makeup match your skin tone, it will still be too light. So don't recommend for your dark-skinned girls to get a transparent lace. And that's why, like, for my clients that order like wigs for me, I don't put my wigs online for a reason, but you have to text me, like you gotta send me a picture of um, of yourself so I can see your complexion, so I could tell my vendor what kind of lace to send me and stuff. Cause, and then you gotta ask them the size of their head because when the wig is too big for your client, it makes bubbles in the front. I don't know if y'all realize yeah, if you yeah, make like bubbles. Extra skin or extra, like, yeah, cause the big. lace is too big. So y'all could pass this around and y'all could take pictures of it. But like make sure like their skin is not like what you're saying. 
Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, because yeah. if you do that to me, like they'll tell me, oh, my head is very small, and I'll tell my vendor, can you? And this, this is what y'all have to do when y'all order hair from these vendors. Y'all can't just tell the vendor, oh, I need a frontal, uh, 18, uh, 18 inch frontal straight hair. Y'all can't just text them that. Y'all gotta describe what y'all want. That's why these vendors will just send y'all anything. Like, for example, if you text me, you say, oh, um, certified touch, I need a 24 inch lace and my head is small. I'ma text my friend, I'ma say, hello, can you send me a 24 inch full lace, small cap, and very thin lace and transparent because you're light skin. Mm -hmm. You see how I just described how I want it? That's what y'all supposed to tell you then so they can send y'all the right thing. I, I will order, I tried to order from somebody else and yeah, them wigs was horrible. So now I'm in the process of disputing it, you know, like trying to get my money back and then have to re-give the clients new hair. Yeah. And they, they told me they, was, they they like 20 years of business. Oh, I'm going to give you the best of the And it's like with these hair vendors, all of them use the same picture. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of them. The same picture. Yeah. The same, same videos. videos. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Or they'll take, they'll take like the hairstylist picture mm -hmm. or other mm -hmm. pictures. Yeah. And be like, we have hair just like this. So mm -hmm. they got them <laughs> And there's some clients that will dye their hair. They will dye the funnel and the dye will get on the lace. There's nothing you can do about that. Mm -hmm. Even if you put makeup on it, you will still, like for example, the color red. Oh my mm -hmm. God, yeah. I just hate red. Because yeah. it really get on the lace. Like once that dye get on the lace, I won't do it. it. Yeah, that's it. I hate that. And don't do it. Because well, with I these clients, let me tell you, like, even though you tell them, like, okay, this place is not good, and they'll beg you to do it, and you'll do it, mm -hmm. they'll still go home and text and be like, um, I don't like the way it came out, but I yeah. told you, like, you mm -hmm. was going to have problems, but you choose to do it. Tell them to come back in two weeks with a new one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What glue do y'all use? What glue do you use? Can go to I use ghost, ghost bond. Okay. I use ghost bond and boho. You? Yeah. Walker tape, walker. And then Ghost Bond for me. Ghost Bond is way better. What glue do you use? Walker. It, it, it. No. it, 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 it's so nasty. I'm gonna show you. Okay. My, my clients. What, what glue you got? Ghost Bond is last. Yeah, I got the Ghost Bond. Ghost Bond is last. 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 The ghost bond whole system. No, I just use that. Just the glue? It's okay. The way y'all do it, I'm going to show y'all. Like, when you put the ghost bond right and you make the client stretch the front, do y'all blow dry it? Yes. No. You blow dry it, like run your fingers through it? You have to. Or it's not going to stay. Because mine has to be nasty when she do it like two and a half, three weeks. Yeah, it really lasts. I can't figure it out. I put it high. I put it high. And you use a regular ghost one. You know, it's like two versions. Yeah. I use XL. That's right. I, I just recently, um, recently, recently learned about XL. It dries faster. Yeah. It dries faster. Instead of premium, I had used premium. Yeah, I was I using premium. premium. I don't even know. No. Premium takes every time. But this one, I'm gonna show you how I use it. I don't like walking tape. That's why I can take right there. I use it only for like the sides. I don't really like it. It's so messy. Mm -hmm. Like once, like when I'm doing somebody hair and I feel like it's messy, like the products that I'm using is kind of messy, I'm gonna feel discouraged. Like I'm not going to do it no more. And I get aggravated really fast. I gotta tell your clients, no hot showers. Because the hot shower, they steam, it goes under the lace, and then um, lifts up the lace too. And when y'all doing, um, the laces, y'all gotta be careful like where y'all put the grease. Cause the grease could go to the front and lace it up too. When I'm doing like frontals, I only use braiding hair if the hair is very short. Because you know, the hair is pulling back and it's gonna sew it. So it apply too much pressure on the edges and it's pulling the edges back. So I try not to put braiding hair. And what type of developer do you use? Cause some people use 40, some people use 20. Uh, the thing about bleaching box, is you cannot time it because you want to have some frontals that take forever to bleach and you want to have some like right when you put it you see the knots are changing and when y'all do like when y'all mix the bw2 and the developer y'all do it um thick like cream cheese so it can sit on top of the knots and it don't go through it because when it go through it makes a mess like when you do the part 
Yeah. 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 So you gotta do it very thick so it can just sit on top. And I use a butter knife. The foil. <laughs> the foil one is so thick, I like it. So you don't tint it? No. Back then, like before I knew about makeup, um, I had you a door. A door. You remember when I used to do your hair? I put it in a bowl and I mix it, I put it in microwave, make it hot, and dip the front in and it changed your lace. But that is so nasty. So the hairline over frontal doesn't matter? Like you know how the functions become real thick and they be having like a like You don't do it. Don't, don't you do don't it. do it. You tell her that you oh, you tell your clients that front is not good. Once they bring me like a very thick frontal and the lines just be so close mm -hmm. to each other, I won't do it. Listen, you rather save yourself or just get the money mm -hmm. because you wanna make money. Mm -hmm. Which one would you rather? I'd rather save myself. I'm not money hungry. If I know the fertile not gonna work out, I'm not gonna do it. Cause when you end up doing it, the client gives you problems, then y'all gonna have back and forth, then you probably gonna have to give her back her money just to save drama, like, you know, that's too much. And you you know, like, they really sell fake frontals where it won't glue down, cause it's what? fake. <laughs> yeah. With the frontal so does it matter the size of braid? No, not really, cause I use hair nets, and it be flat. I always use sewing nets. Some people need to go with two braids. Oh no. Do you bring it down on their forehead? Like if, if they do have a lot. Okay, yeah, I bring it down. And no matter how many, you're going to have to cut lace, like a lot of lace out. Like for example, let me show it to you. Like there. Right here. Hold it. I would like. So you trying to match your hairline. So you'll yeah. cut all that. Okay. Yeah, and I'll cut all this out. So it's okay, and then a little piece. Yeah, right. it don't matter. So ghost bond is not messy. So when you pluck it, it'll make a mess. I know walking tape. When you pluck it, it's gonna make a big mess. Yeah, I don't put them under the dry because um when you put the mousse on it, you gotta hurry up and blow dry because that front will lift up. So what I do, I put the mousse and I tie it with the wrapping paper mm -hmm. and I blow dry it and like press it down, run my fingers oh, through it. Okay. Yeah. Cause if not, that front will go lift up. And that's why some clients, their front will be lifting up so fast. Okay. And I ask them like, if I know them, I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna put mousse. And they don't come for touching, so. But if I know a client, like they want it to last and they came from like, you know, 40 minutes away or something, mm -hmm. I'll just, like put got to be glued, do the edges, and that's it. Okay, first we want to bleach the knots. And you want to have some sort of the baby hairs be out. What you do, you take a hot comb. You see this hot comb is very good. Y'all can get it on Amazon. Bring the front and got to be glued to hold the hair so the bleach won't get on. Get on. I'll put like two scoops. I use a point. I just put like a little bit. Just to get this. Never do it watery. Never. And never time your frontals too. Remember what I told y'all? Like you'll have some frontals that'll be fast and there's some that'll take longer. So you just gotta just keep monitoring it and just keep looking at it. Y'all see how it just sit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, don't press on it, like, you gotta hold it. 
Because if you're pressing on it while applying the bleach on the knobs, it'll work through. Okay. And make sure y'all just don't leave, like y'all don't leave a thick layer of bleach on it. Thin it out and spread it everywhere. Okay. How do y'all mold the sun of y'all here, like, in front of the cap? With the spray? With the spray? Yeah. I use the gel, the little one. You know that we're stuck with the juice? Uh-huh. Yeah. Which one? The gel. You see how when they be taking the gel? I put it in that. I spray it in somebody. I had to wash her hair. Yeah, and, she, and then you just taking the cap. It looked like it was, like, caked the hair, up on the yeah. hair so bad, yeah. Mm -hmm. And y'all know when y'all apply, like, the Dox Vigo spray, and sometimes it'll turn white, right? You don't turn white on y'all? Yes, I'm yeah. It's because y'all keep going over it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sure y'all move all the hair for the ones on the sides. over their face and I make them stretch it out because I want it to be thin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because look, when you put the cap, right, it just looks so thick, like, but when you stretch it out, mm -hmm. if I did your hair before you won't know, this is what I do. So it don't matter the color of the cap? Yeah. You know how some people be having darker caps for darker people? No, I just use this for all my uh, clients. Can y'all see how thin it looks? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, what I do is I spray the Gatsby Glue glue exactly on her hairline. And when you spray the Gatsby Glue spray, every time you spray it, make sure you push it back. Mm -hmm. Or the Gatsby Glue spray is going to slide down on their face. So you spray it. And always make sure to mold down the sides by the ear. Always mold it down. That's on four or it's on high. It's on high. Then I will touch the cap. Y'all see how I'm going to touch it when I'm just blow drying it? Because when you touch it, it's going to turn white. It makes it look so messy. This is where I'm going to cut it. So I could add the hair net in the back. Has it ever ripped while the plant was holding it? Huh? Has it ever ripped while yeah, the plant was holding it? Yeah, and I have to take it off and put it in there. Because there are nails. Touch it. If you don't get the 
side the mold down. Doesn't matter. No, you have to get the side mold down. If you don't get it mold down, it's, it's gonna, gonna lift up. up like it's gonna lift so up. So I have a question. You see how small her head is, and then you put the frontal like half of her head. You, how do you feel? No. Like three bundles? Do you see how big her head is? <laughs> on her forehead. Is? <laughs> when you see that forehead is big. Um, you're trying to bring it the frontal like a little bit up. You create a hairline for it. Because mm -hmm. if you put the frontal all the way back there, it looks bad. Mm -hmm. So when they have a big forehead like that, trying to bring the frontal a little up. Can you still manage to like fit all bundles? Yeah, I always fit all bundles. It don't matter if you bring me three, four, five, I'll fit all Because I don't do the traps. I cut it from the middle. And when y'all cutting, make sure like y'all have them sitting up and with their head up. Because if not, you're gonna cut their skin and use the tip of the scissor to cut the cap. And don't worry about the parts that y'all see that's lifting up. We're gonna mold that back down. Mm -hmm. You gotta be real careful because you're gonna cut their skin. Because if you don't wash it with shampoo and it's dry, it's going to be hard because there's still more um, bleach on it. And when you wash it in front of y'all going to see what I'm washing. I scrub it so all that bleach will come off. So when it's a lace wig, you mold the back too, right? No, I sew down. I sew starting from this way going across because I don't glue the back down. Okay. I sew it because um, when I glue the back down, when I do it, it makes bruises. Mm -hmm. in the back of the client's hair because that glue and it's pulling too. I will add so I'll put it.
then I gotta make sure y'all wash it good. What are you washing it with? The shampoo? Oh, yeah. I use um, sesame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use sesame. Yeah. 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 And I scrub it. So all that bleach could come mm -hmm. off. Yeah, it's gonna be hard, and every time you part it, it's gonna feel like it's like because the beach is still on it. comment and subscribe to my youtube channel and i will be having more videos coming for y'all